Ok, let's talk samples. One of the more frequent questions I come across is about samples for ProTracker. I thought I'd spend a couple of minutes showing you the most common ways of obtaining these. This video is divided up into 6 chapters, and time codes can be found in the description. The most common way back in the late 80s and early 90s was to use samples already used in other songs from games, demos or from so-called sample discs. These were physical discs packed with nothing but samples and sometimes maybe an example module or two. The most famous one is probably the sample disc ST01, which was bundled with the Ultimate Soundtracker by Karsten Obarski, released in 1987. Most of the samples on this disc were sampled from Roland, Yamaha and Casio Sense from that era. Later discs included samples from other sources like movies and games. Today, there are over a hundred of these ST discs. Since most of us didn't use a hard drive, the only thing you could really save to disc would be the song data. This doesn't include the sample itself, only notes, commands and some parameters. Then the samples were loaded from external discs when loading the module. You can see this option in ProTracker and Amiga, and this is why many early modules use sample names like this. It wasn't uncommon to swap discs during the loading of one song, copying the samples into the memory one at a time. This came with an obvious limitation though. You couldn't edit or modify the samples in any way, since the original sample would be loaded back every time you reloaded the module. To load a sample in ProTracker, go to the Disk Up dialog and click here. You can enter an assigned path here, or you can go through your different drives by clicking this little white thing over here. Today, there are several resources online to download modules from. Play nice and credit the people behind the music when using their samples though. Links to sample discs and module archives can be found in the description. As hard drives became more common, so did samplers. The sampler is an external device to let you record sounds directly to the Amiga, and I won't go into much detail about these since my friend Citrix did a couple of videos on this topic already. But since sampling in the ProTracker clone is now possible, I'll go through the basics and give you a hint or two about how to think when sampling. Alright, we're switching to the clone. The sampler can be found right here and will give you a dialog that looks like this. This is quite different from what you get on the Amiga, but if you really want to go hardcore and sample on real hardware, there are better alternatives to do this. Here you can choose whether to record the left or the right channel or mix them together. I would say choosing left or right is preferred since mixing stereo channels can sound a bit weird in mono. This of course depends on what source you're using. This list of devices will look different depending on what system you're on. I am on a MacBook and I'm using the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 connected to my Yamaha Reface DX synthesizer. To the right you'll find Frequency. This is at what sample rate you'll be sampling and over here is the corresponding note in ProTracker. This means that if I hit the note C on my keyboard, I'll need to play the note A3 with a plus 4 fine tune to sound the same in ProTracker. The note A3 plus 4 is set as default, because it's the highest safe frequency used in ProTracker without distorting the sound. This will produce a sample in high quality, but will have no room to go any higher in pitch. This sample frequency is great for cymbals, hi-hats and other high frequency non-tonal sounds that would not be subject to any change of pitch. When it comes to chords, pads and other samples that will change but not very much, I think somewhere in the F3 range is a good compromise. This means you'll be able to change the key of your song without hitting that dreadful B3 note. It's also a good idea to sample at least two versions of the same chord, with different inversions, to avoid going too far from the original sampling frequency when for example going from C major to G major. For lead instruments I would go for somewhere around C3 to make some room for that awesome solo you were about to do. I'll explain more about this very precise frequency in the next chapter. Also, when sampling, try to go as loud as you can without clipping, to get the highest quality from your sample. The volume can be set later with parameters and commands in ProTracker. Today, sampling is quite easy. 
Whether it's borrowed samples from that tune you just heard on YouTube, Spotify or your vinyl player, exporting some sounds from Ableton or plugging in your instrument to your computer, you will have no problem ending up with a sample. Try avoiding stereo effects though, these will work against you in the process. The Amiga 8-bit format is quite different from today's sound formats, so there are a couple of things to have in mind. I'll use Audacity to guide you through the process. First, make the sample mono. This can be done by ditching one of the channels or mixing them together. I would recommend using one channel or the other, since stereo effects can produce unwanted distortions in mono, but this really depends on what source you're using. A lot of music from example the 60s are panned really hard, so sampling vocals or drums is often easier than you would think. Next, we're going to normalize the sample. We need as much data as possible to keep the quality at a reasonably high level, because remember, the Amiga sound is only 8 bits. If you want a sample with a lower volume, you can just achieve this with commands or parameters in ProTracker later on. Now we can apply effects or other edits you want to do with a sample. I will just leave this as it is. Step 4 is not mandatory, but this can really help you later on. Save the sample as a WAV or some other modern high bitrate format. This will be your master sample in case you need to edit or resample it later on. And so, finally, it's time to export to Amiga. This step can be done in many different ways, and what I'm about to show you is how I usually do it. It's pretty straightforward and will create a decent result. The ProTracker clone is able to load WAV files, but you will have more control over the result if you follow these steps. First, we need to set the desired sampling frequency. In Audacity, you do it down here. I recommend setting this to somewhere between 16 and 28 kHz and this is where it gets technical. And I'm really sorry, I will now spend way too much time explaining this, but I feel it's important to have heard at least once. Let's get one thing straight. ProTracker is not a piano. It's a digital tool using hardware with rounding issues and things are getting a bit weird here. The note C3 in ProTracker has the frequency of 16574 Hz, and this is not an arbitrary number. It's based on that A equals 440 Hz, resulting in that C equals 261.63 Hz. Multiplied with 64, this becomes 16744.32 Hz. Well, that's not very close to what we want, and there are two reasons why this is the case. To get the closest hardware clock period, we divide the clock frequency with 16744.32 Hz to get period 212. Let's check the period table. Ok, so that's 16731 Hz. That's pretty close, it's just 13 Hz off, so what's the deal with this 16574 value then? Well, the thing is that the period table used in ProTracker is grandfathered from the old Ultimate Sound Tracker source code that for some reason used the NTSE period table based on another clock frequency. This gives us period 214 instead, corresponding to this 16574Hz value. This is why ProTracker is a bit out of tune. The rounding errors also contribute to individual tuning errors between notes. I've put a link to a table of all the frequencies in ProTracker in the description, where you can also see these out-of-tune errors. You can also go to the sampler in the clone to see the fixed frequencies for every note. Okay, so you decided what sample frequency you want, and it's now finally time to export this to the obsolete format we all love so much. I will go for the 16574Hz value, since this is a lead instrument and I will eventually want to go higher in pitch in my song. In Audacity, you can just export the audio like this. Hit Ctrl or Command Shift E and select Other Uncompressed Files, and then down here, Amiga IFF and 8-bit signed. The sample is now ready to be loaded into ProTracker. There is more information on other ways to do this conversion in the description. If you want to export the sample to an actual Amiga, there are several ways to do this. The most common ways are probably via a PCMCIA adapter with a CF card for newer Amigas or through a floppy emulator like the GoTech for older Amigas. This video will not be a file transfer tutorial, so I can only advise you to Google that information instead. 
Hopefully, our sample is already good as it is, but there are some things you'll want to do after loading the sample into ProTracker. If your sample should be looping, here's what I normally do. Put the loop where you want it to loop and calibrate it with this repeat length value until it sounds good. You may have to move the loop start too. To reduce the file size, remove everything to the right of the loop. This part of the sample is not accessible anyway, not even when using the 9 command. This is easily done by decreasing the length of the sample here. Just click and hold down this down arrow. The decrease will stop automatically by the end of the loop, so you won't lose any important data. If your sample is not looping, zoom into the very last bytes of the sample and ramp the volume down to zero like this. By making the last byte zero, we prevent the sample from clicking or producing a high-pitched noise. This will happen more often on Amiga than in the clone, so let me end this episode with a reminder. Always play your song on real hardware before releasing it, because without the legacy, why the f*** are we doing this? And I think that's all you wanted to know about sampling on the Amiga. Good luck, keep tracking, and be creative. Thanks for watching.